Greetings builders and welcome to the part 2 of my 6 melee starter builds for the Settlers of Kalgur League. If you missed the part 1, don't worry, you can find it link in the video description. As mentioned yesterday, those melee builds received a lot of changes for this new league, and because of that their complete guides will only be available after July 26. But don't worry, starting tomorrow I release 9 starter builds ready to use on day 1, so stay tuned and let's get into it! The first build of our selection is the huge Ultimate Sweep Slayer with the Duelist class. Instead of many small hits like Cyclone, Sweep deals few big hits with an immense hour of effect. To visit the pros of this build I would start with its boss damage. Sweep deals really have hits that are capable of killing guardians with only 4 or 5 spins of your sword. I assure you that this is going to make you feel like a boss. This build also has a great clear speed because of the huge air of effect that almost covers the whole screen. Now to visit the cons I would start with survivability. You need to stay still and very close to enemies, what leaves you in a vulnerable position. I recommend you to always stay a few levels higher than the maps you're in and invest in your survivability. As for budget this build is cheap, you can get it destroying early in game maps with only around 90 chaos. To comfortable advance to yellow maps I recommend investing around 150 chaos and for easily completing your atlas I recommend investing around 6 divines. For clear speed I'll give this one 9 out of 10. You deal devastating hits with huge air of effect and I only took one point out because you need to stand still to attack and the attack speed is not the best. The boss damage is incredible and deserves 10 out of 10. Even though you do just a few hits per second, they are so powerful they are going to kill guardians with less than 5 attacks. For this survivability I'll give it 8 out of 10. This build has many defensive layers such as permanent fortify, armor, evasion and spell suppression. But you need to be careful because while attacking you are always standing still and in a vulnerable position. Next we have the super fast and strong infernal flicker strike ascendant with the scion class. This build uses the unique sword Auto Sacrifice to sustain the frenzy charges needed for you to keep flickering, but that's not any Auto's flicker build, this one also chills and shocks enemies for a lot more damage, clear speed and survivability. To list the pros of this build I would of course start with its clear speed, flicker is just incredibly fast and super cool to play, this build also counts with an amazing boss damage and high survivability. Now to list the cons the first thing that comes to my mind is that you are always very close to enemies which is a vulnerable position. Another issue is that you have little control over your character making it hard on bosses where you need to mind your position or attack the right enemy. As for budget you can get it destroying early end game maps with only around 90 chaos. To comfortable advance to yellow maps you need to invest around 150 chaos and for easily completing your atlas I recommend investing around 4 divines. We need two mandatory unique items for this build. The first and most important is the Auto Sacrifice Sword that allows you to maintain your frenzy charges always up even while flickering. Next we also need the Call of the Void Ring that causes your attacks to chill and shatter enemies. This ring might be a little expensive during the first days of a new league, but don't worry you'll be fine without it while waiting for the prices to drop. For clear speed this build is surely a 10 out of 10. As any other flicker build, this one is also insanely fast, so fast that some players can even play without getting nauseous. The boss damage is great and deserves 9 out of 10. This build achieves high amounts of DPS capable of decimating even the big bosses in just seconds. Now for this survivability I'll only give it 8 out of 10, even though this build still has almost 100,000 effective HP because of high armor evasion and spell suppression. I had to take 2 points out because they are always very close to enemies. Finally we have the spin to wing fire cyclone berserker with the marauder class. This build converts 100% of cyclones damage into fire to clear endgame maps like an amazing flame tornado. To list the pros of this build I would start with the clear speed, with cyclone you never need to stop moving and that spin to wing feeling is just awesome. This build also has a great single target damage with not much investment. Now to list the cons, the main issue of this build is survivability. Even though this build has many defensive layers, it also needs to stay very close to enemies, which is a vulnerable position. And as a berserker you already take 10% increased damage. 
As for budget, you can get it destroying early endgame maps with only around 90 chaos. To comfortable advance to yellow maps, you need to invest around 150 chaos, and for easily completing your atlas, I recommend investing around 60 vines, otherwise your survivability won't be enough and you'll end up dying a lot. You need two mandatory unique items for this build. The first one is the Gamahu's Flame Axe that already converts 60% of your physical damage to fire, grants 20% fire penetration and triggers Molten Burst on hits for a lot more single target damage. Next, we also need a Stampede Boots that guarantee that our movement speed is always 150% of its base. This is great because now we can replace the regular Cyclone with Cyclone of Tumult for a lot more damage and error effect. For clear speed, this build gets 9 out of 10. As mentioned before, Cyclone is an awesome skill that never stops moving. You just need to slide through the map, killing everything that gets near. The boss damage is amazing, deserves 10 out of 10. Now with Cyclone of Tumult, we have a lot more attack speed to trigger Modem Burst many times and destroy even the biggest bosses in just a few seconds. The survivability on the other hand gets 7 out of 10. Even though this build has a great life pool, permanent fortify, high armor, high evasion and spell suppression, it's always in a vulnerable position, very close to enemies. That might be a little frustrating if you try high tier maps without investing in your survivability. And that's it for today guys, don't forget to check the part 1 in the video description. And of course, if you have any questions about those starter builds, just leave me a comment and I'll be glad to answer them. I wish you all an amazing day, and don't forget to keep building!